Let's learn how to calculate double integrals over rectangular regions. When you see a notation like this, where r is given as a rectangle from 0 to pi over 6 and 0 to pi over 2, it means that x1 is 0, x2 is pi over 6, y1 is 0, y2 is pi over 2. So they're saying that the region in 2D has x and y multiplied that means it's going to be a rectangle looking like so x is running from 0 to pi over 6 y is running from 0 to pi over 2 and creates a rectangle like so this function over here is called function z or whatever you can call it it's floating in 3d like a curtain whatever it is shape in 3d and we are trying to figure out the volume below this curtain and above this rectangle. That's exactly the idea of the double integral. Your job is to leave alone, I a copy the function inside, which is x sine x plus y, don't touch it. But your job is to figure out what is your r, d, or whatever they call this region. r because region, d sometimes is called as domain. This is your r over here. In 2d and change this. This should be... Since we're working with x and y, we're going to have dx, dy. Whatever order, we don't know yet, so we will choose in a second. In this case, it's pretty easy because x and y are given. The range, is, range for each is given. x is moving or running from 0 to pi over 6. y is running from 0 to pi over 2. It's literally saying it over here x is from 0 to pi over 6 and y is from 0 to pi over 2 and now you have to be consistent if you have x um, limits of integration inside then the x should go first and then dy should go second so y is from 0 to pi over 2 while x is from 0 and pi over 6 you should be consistent when you build a double integral now you need to um, make a point that all limits of integrations here are numbers only when they are numbers numbers or constants right numbers you are allowed to switch uh, order of integration so technically speaking you can choose which way you want to integrate first i don't want to integrate with respect to x first too complicated you have product there you'll have to do um product rule undo product rule it's going to be integration by parts. Eh, too complicated. Maybe if we integrate with respect to y, it will get easier. I don't know. Let's try. Only because limits of integrations are numbers. You can change the order of integration. Pi over 6 will be outside. So now dx is outside. Pi over 2 is inside. So now dy is inside. And I will be integrating with respect to y first. x sine x plus y this is easier because then there is no product happening when i'm integrating with respect to y y is inside of the sine and x is a constant when you integrate with respect to y integral from 0 to pi where 6 have to wait i need to finish integrating first this integral from 0 to pi over 2 in blue so x is a constant integral of sine is minus cosine x plus y uh, i don't need to write down uh, dy anymore and i need to divide by the leading coefficient over here which is one so i'm dividing by one this is u substitution this is actually u so i need to do u substitution u substitution and i do have amazing videos about u substitution shortcuts uh, i will attach the video at the end and you can just uh, watch it and review what i'm saying integral of sine is minus cosine and divide by the linear coefficient attached to y which is one now it's going to be a bar from zero let me make it blue from zero to pi over two the axis keep waiting for us to finish integration of the inner integral so sometimes people get confused uh, when i'm plugging pi over 2 am i plugging into y x or both since they're two variables sometimes people uh, uh, they sign which variable i'm talking about right now 
I usually don't do it because I just remember. We just finished integrating with respect to y. Then it's about y. We're plugging y's, not x's or both. Moreover, uh, dy disappeared, right? On the dx state. Then that is the variable we need to plug in right now to finish integration of the first inside integral. So I don't plug anything into x. And I also want to kick out the negative sign outside. So now it's going to be positive. Uh, everything inside will be positive. Cosine of x plus pi over 2 minus cosine of x plus 0 dx. Finally, we can now integrate with respect to x. Let's see. Did it even get better or not from this point of view? Negative is outside, minus look good. I think everything looks good to me. Let's distribute before we in keep integrating. It's going to be x. Distributing means let's multiply by x. x cosine x plus pi over 2 minus x cosine x dx and i did not forget the negative sign in front here it is still there's negative in front i'm integrating all of this you don't have to put brackets some people just know that integral sign starts and the x ends so we're integrating everything inside well we'll still have to integrate x cos and x dx with respect to x which will require integration by parts it's not uh, there's no use substitution here going on so unfortunately we still have to do that but we could uh... yeah there's no way to avoid it i was just thinking for a second so we basically have to undo product rule and to undo product rule if you don't remember undo product rule this is where integration by parts was created specifically for this reason. Choose U using Li Ate mnemonic a rule. You can watch my video about that as well. If you see logarithm, choose U to be logarithm. If you see inverse, choose that. I don't see that. But if you see algebra first, then choose algebra. Algebraic functions are like x, x squared, and so on. So I will choose U to be x du becomes 1 dx then there's no other choices but to use cosine dx to be dv dv is cosine x plus pi over 2 dx integrate and to get into v v is the integral of cosine that is sine of x plus pi over 2 plus uh, uh, divided by the leading coefficient so by over 1 again and remember how to do integration by parts, cross product minus integral cross product. So it's going to be, first there's a huge negative sign in front of everything. Maybe it was not very smart to keep it, but it's fine, too late. Second of all, I have two integrals here. Maybe I should actually write them down. Um, two integrals with almost the same answer, because we will be choosing the same u and v for each. It's going to be, let's distribute uh, the negative sign. It's going to be uh, this integral goes first because it's going to be positive. Integral from 0 to pi over 6 x cosine x dx minus integral from 0 to pi over 6 x cosine x with a shift pi over 2 dx. Sometimes people even name it. Let's call it i1, integral 1. And then i2. So I'm integrating i2 right now, as you have noticed, because of the shift. So let's just write down i2 equals, integral 2 equals, without negative sign. It will be x times sine x plus pi over 2 minus integral sine x plus pi over 2 times 1 dx. This is basically how we undo product rule. 
product rule, integration by parts helps us to give us a part which is already done, integrated, which is into plugged limits of integration. And then one more integral which is easier to integrate than the one we used before, we had before. Plug x is going to be pi over 6 sine pi over 6 plus pi over 2. As you can see, I'm not signing it anymore as x equals x equals because there's only one variable left. So usually people don't do it anymore. Minus integral of sine, again, it's a minus cosine of x plus pi over 2 divided by 1. Don't forget about this. From 0 to pi over 6 equals i forgot to plug zero right yeah should have plugged zero when you plug zero this thing get becomes zero so i did not do it right away i just noticed it's going to be zero so the first part has top minus the bottom the bottom gives you zero pi over six sine pi over six plus pi over two if you create common denominator is going to be four pi over 6, which we're going to figure out a bit later. What is that? Plus integral of cosine. Let's plug the top minus the bottom right away. Pi over 6 plus pi over 2, which is 4 pi over 6. Plus, because minus minus gives you plus, but there's still minus, and it's not 0 this time. It's going to be a cosine of pi over 2. When you plug 0, it gives you cosine of pi over 2, but cosine of pi over 2 is 0. Just to make sure you remember that. And that is I2, the second integral. I think it looks correct from my notes. Let me check really quickly. Yeah, looks good. We'll figure out these numbers maybe later, maybe now. Seems like sine of 4 pi over 6 is square root of 3 over 2. Cosine is 4, of 4 pi over 6 is negative 1 half. Those things happened. Okay, keep going. So it will be some kind of number. The thing is we need to simplify it at the very end anyways. But if you want to, I could write it down as the square root of 3 pi over 12 minus one half plus zero i'm not even sure if it's correct i need to check all the uh, calculations but i think it's good so if you have a different number maybe i made a mistake i'll see it at the end if it matches my answer integral one will be using the same idea of integration by parts so maybe you can just reuse this solution because everything will be the same except just there will be no shift over here there will be no x plus pi over two so I2 will be, I'm looking at this line over here. I2 will be x sine x from 0 to pi over 6. Oh, we could actually just uh, even take the solution, I guess. Ah, it's fine. Let me write down. Minus, I will be looking over here. Yeah, this line. This line is better because we already integrated. Minus minus gives you plus cosine of x also from 0 to pi over 6, like so. Looks very neat to me. Instead of x plus pi over 2, we just have x. Plugging in pi over 6 and 0 gives me pi over 6 sine of pi over 6. 0 gives you 0 plus... cosine of pi over 6 right these ones we hopefully know sine of pi over 6 is one half times one half cosine of pi over 6 is square root of 3 over 2 hopefully this will simplify somehow because um I will put it in the flower shape as well because there was minus between these two integrals. So in general, we're talking about I1 minus I2. Let's do that. Then, or thus, 
I1 minus I2 equals. So this problem is more about trigonometric functions and actually integration of double integrals, to be honest, which is kind of annoying, but it's fine. Pi over 12, I'm simplifying this part, plus square root of 3 over 2 minus square root of 3 pi over 12 minus minus gives you plus 1 half. This simplifies into, well, we have several common denominators. Let's have a square root of 3 pi, which is going to be, we can factor out pi, 1 minus square root of 3 over 12, and then plus square root of 3 plus 1 over 2. That's a very unusual answer, but okay. Which equals 2? Which equals 2? Let me calculate. Anyway, it's supposed to equal approximately 0 0.17. So hopefully it does. I tried my best. Hopefully it does. Uh, fix some algebra if you find a typo. But this is the idea, just a little bit overcomplicating the whole algebra part. And this was a pretty annoying algebra part because you also have to remember the unit circle. Okay, it is very important to remember unit circle. But um, integration by parts twice, and it kind of looks the same, so it's a bit annoying. But yes, it's a good practice for the first problem of the chapter. Good job for watching and keep practicing.